Today I want to talk about a legendary album from 1993 that I've never had in my in my collection. I, I bought the CD the first week it was released. Uh, this came out in September of 93. I'm talking about uh, Nirvana's In Utero record. And, you know, you get to a point where you're looking at your collection, you're thinking about things that you don't have that you would like to have. You're constantly looking for those items in various, you know, physical encounters uh, at different record shops, maybe record shows. And for whatever reason, this has kind of escaped me over the last couple of years. And, you know, with your interest, things kind of ebb and flow. Uh, but this record just kind of came on my radar again when, when Steve Albini passed away, what, two months ago. Tragically, way too young. And I started thinking, well, you know what, I really do need to kind of dial in this search for a good pressing of In Utero. I looked at the original pressings, the one that came out on a, on a white vinyl, and those things are pretty expensive these days. And, you know, 1993, with a really long record as far as taking something that was, you know, you had the, the luxury of the CD era, and these these albums were jam-packed with information with songs with long sides if if we're talking about vinyl so i was a little bit leery about going after an original pressing i do have uh the first very early repress of of uh siamese dream and that is a little bit different because it's presented over two 33 and a third records uh so things are spread out a little bit and uh, things have a little more space to breathe, uh, not as compressed. And, you know, when you have a very long side of music on a 33 and a third vinyl record, there are things that need to be taken into consideration. I'm not a mastering engineer, so I'm not going to go way, way deep on that. But, you know, dynamic range, the amount of bass, uh, considerations have to be made for, you know, as you get near the end of the record, as far as the azimuth is concerned. Um, I'm already going way too deep than I wanted to. Uh, so when looking at In Utero, there is a 20th anniversary pressing that came out in 2013, and that is a half-speed master uh, a double 45 RPM that also includes a bonus disc that has the heart-shaped box and all apologies original Albini mix. If you know the history of this record, you will know that those two tracks, those were the singles that were going to be coming out. And the band decided to, after after the, the mix-down sessions with uh, Albini and the whole recording and engineering of the record, of course, uh, they decided to take those two singles or eventual singles over to Scott Litt and he did a little bit of a polish on that mix uh, for both of those songs and I would I would classify the difference you can go on YouTube and hear to hear these different versions um, the Albini mix on those two songs is a little more raw especially on uh, all apologies uh, Kurt's vocal is a little bit down in the mix. There is an, uh, a, a really distinct accentuation on, on the drum track on that song. They are really punched up. They are, the kick drum uh, from Dave Grohl is absolutely amazing on that track. And it is no slouch on the Scott Litt remix as well. So there is just subtle differences and for me I wanted to have an original version of this record as it was originally released. I didn't want to have a revisionist although it is nice to have uh, that 20th anniversary uh, edition does have a third disc. Um, so you do have the original mix that spread across 245 RPMs that were these were also a DMM direct metal mastered cut. 
And that kind of really allows for, you know, I've, I've been listening to some interviews, some old interviews with Albini. And when that came out in 2013, he sat down for a long podcast. It's called the Creative Control Podcast. I'm going to drop a I'll uh, drop a picture in here. Uh, that's a, a, a really good listen. And Albini is very complimentary of the 2013 20th anniversary double 45 RPM DMM cut. But again, I wanted, I didn't want a 45 RPM edition spread across two records where everything was going to be chopped up. The flow was going to be different. What I ended up doing was I went for one of the highly acclaimed ORG pressings um, from 2009, and I got the 2010 repress of the 29 uh, recut that was done by Bernie Grunman. Bernie Grunman did the original lacquer cut uh, in 1993 as well. Here is that record and yeah i mean check out the dead wax here look at how much uh you know recorded information is on both sides of this record very little dead wax what i can tell you though is that after spinning this a couple times i am extremely pleased really happy with this and this was a discogs purchase um you can find this record you should be able to find this record for under $100 here as we sit in 2024. I actually found something for a, right around that mark, and I put in an offer that was accepted. Uh, so I'm extremely pleased. This is, um, you know, this seller was pretty cool because everything was really specifically listed. And, uh, you know, you can see that uh, it included the original hype sticker. Uh, it also included um, this original postcard talking about all of the uh, ORG kind of remaster series, uh, you know, back in 2009 and 2010 when these came out. Um, cool to have that. This included the original, uh, you know, a reprint of the, the original insert as well. The jacket quality is fine. This is not, you know, this is not like a, a tone poet Staunton tip on, but uh, it's it's plenty plenty good for what this is. Um, there is the back cover, but yeah, this is a pivotal album uh, in the history of rock and roll. Um, you know, my wife and I went to Seattle last year. We went to that Experience Music Project Museum, and they had a whole uh, quite a bit there on Nirvana. Um, I actually took a tour, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, um, a grunge rock tour, very touristy in Seattle, and they drove by, or we drove by, uh, Cobain's old house. Um, really, really beautiful area where he had that house, he and Courtney Love, of course. So I just wanted to come on and talk about this pressing. If you are looking at uh, purchasing or, or looking for a great copy of In Utero, uh, the cool thing about this is this is AAA. This is all analog. Um, Bernie Grunman was given access to the original master tapes and he worked his magic on, on this cut. It's a 33 RPM and uh, it, it has the original mix as it was released in 1993. I guess, you know, if I was really uh, totally in love with, with this record as far as being super, super important to me, I would probably seek out that 20th anniversary uh, double 45 R RPM cut. I know there was a 30th anniversary that came out um, late last year, I think. I just, you know, I didn't really research that one. Uh, I just wanted to go back in time. And I had heard about these ORG pressings, and that's the avenue I took. Um, so, you know, for the most part, when I buy things on Discogs, I'm looking at the ratings on those sellers, and I'm looking at 
the past history as far as, um, you know, what is this record being sold for recently? And at that point in time, you can then, you, you can look at the median price, but you really need to go back and dig into the sales history. Using that, looking at the median, looking at the actual uh, seller, and if that person has activated, uh, you know, make an offer, don't hesitate to do it. You know, don't be over the top as far as really wanting to cheap out on your offer. But I put in an offer of $15 and it was accepted within minutes. And uh, I was presented with, an, uh, you know, an invoice on Discogs and went ahead and completed the transaction. So... That is it, my little journey and research, and finally now having what I feel is a really fantastic representation of this record. Nirvana in Utero uh, from 1993. This is the ORG pressing that came out in uh, 2010. This one in particular was pressed at Palace. There are colored versions that were pressed at RTI that came out one year earlier in 2009. Um, I just wanted a nice black vinyl pressing of this, and uh, that's what I have. Thanks, everybody. I will be back pretty soon. Um, we're running into a vacation situation as far as a long weekend. Um, so I may or may not have time to do something before I leave town, but... Um, uh, I've already got plans for the trip will involve some digging, so stay tuned for that, and uh, have a great weekend.